Hi, everyone. Um, my name's Maria Weaver. I'm a librarian in research services at Griffith University. So for the context of this presentation, I'm just going to give a brief description of my role. I'm a client facing librarian. I do training workshops, consultations uh, in literature search, reference management, researcher profiles and um, publishing. Uh, my clients are PhD candidates, researchers and academics. So my presentation today is based on my experience in uh, Marco Fami's uh, program for, digit for librarians to sort of undergo a 12 week mentoring um, program. So it's called Digital Librarian in Residence program. And for this year, I, I was able to participate in this. So I'll be talking about the, my experience in it and Marco working in the data co-op platform projects. So before I go any further, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of all of the lands on which we are meeting and pay respect to the elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. I live on the Gold Coast, which is uh, part of the Ugambi, um, Gombe Mary people's lands. Okay, so for the data co-op platform, it, this is a project that is funded by LEAF, um, the LEAF grant to support data science research. I might just do this. Um, by making spatial temporal data sets from different domains available in a uniform way. Combining data sets requires values of properties from multiple data sources to be consistent by having the same format, syntax, and the same meaning semantics. So the project started with the ABS census data with the aim of making 200 to 300 data sets available by the end of the project. This is the methodology that is pictured on the data co-op website. So the information is out there. Um, as you can see, the um, data will be coming from various sources census, urban data, health services, public health, jobs from government and from not-for-profit organizations. There are family service providers, um, community services, humanitarian organizations and uh, backbone institutes. There will also be data from community and social media. So the platform intends to use the, the stakeholders use cases um, engender community engagement and perform some data engineering on the data sets, allow the users or consumers to do data analytics visualization, and they will then provide um, data products in the form of secure data packages, um, both open and also open, openly available um, linked data packages, plus um, access to interactive dashboards. So this is also information on the data co-op website. Um, so from the left to the right, you can see the first column is talking about the open data providers, the, the sources, and all of these um, data sets are, will be very varied, will be from different domains, probably different um, structure, um, formats, etc. So they will require data harmonization. And then uh, that will facilitate data linkage and onto open access as well as secure data uh, publishing of products. So I will just um, focus on. Um, so those are the things I was talking about. So I'll mainly be focusing on the back end side of things. And these are the uh, part of the activities that I was able to observe uh, during my placement as digital librarian in residence. So um, shad I was shadowing Marco and attending um, data co-op meetings and um, trying to understand. So I, this is all new to me. So I'm new to vocabulary as well. I'm, I'm very um, happy to learn more. So the, um, the different data providers will be providing a lot of data sets and there is focus by data co-op on social science researchers. So 
they've started with um, ABS census data, which is a very good place to start because that the, this is information that is very valued by, by researchers. Um, and so the, the activities I've observed ha have to do with semantic harmonization, mostly plus also the use of um, semantic technologies like JSON, LD, and um, referring to schema.org for um, properties to match the controlled vocabulary that the data call-up collection team was trying to put together in order to harmonize um, ABS census uh, properties to start with. So the a ABS census data can be accessed using a table builder. So I have a screenshot um, um, a little later. I'm not uh, familiar, all that familiar with table builder, but I've had a look and had a play with it the last day, uh, the last couple of days. Um, the team has processed data and produced JSON files based on the um, properties of the census data. And the dictionary used is the 2901, defines all the variables. Um, the variables were combined to produce, can be combined to produce thousands of attributes. For example, um, single variables would be age, uh, sex, and occupation. And so you would have properties um, that would say, for example, females in the range of um, 45 to 55 in a specific occupation, say professional. Um, and then the raw da data may be further computed to um, produce statistics. This is what we um, were hoping to do with um, the, the consumers of data will be trying to do. So this is just a, um, a screenshot of the census table builder um, with the data set um, selected dwelling characteristics. So it has, um, I'll focus on this particular section because it's, um, it's showing a lot of information there. So that section shows that there are three variables in there, um, mortgage repayments with the um, mnemonic MRERD or um, the property or the variable ID, um, STRD or dwelling structure, and then the state. Okay. Um, so this is just a screenshot of the ABS census dictionary. And in the inset picture, lower right, you can see the age property or the age uh, variable with the mnemonic AGAP. Um, so that will be um, invoked in JSON and JSON-LD um, taggings. Here's a sample of a um, typical JSON uh, data statement. So for the, the text in red, these are actually the name of the variables that are in the um, dictionary. For example, age persons, and then it's, it's combined with um, the qualification median. And then to the right of the red text, which are the variables, there's a colon, and then you're given the values for them. So we have variables like age persons, mortgage repayment monthly, total personal income weekly, rent weekly, um, total family income weekly, number of persons per bedroom, total matriotesis, weekly household size, et cetera. And then there's the value. So that's how a sample JSON um, um, statement would look like. So we're going to use the dictionary, of course, to um, define the attributes. So for age persons in the dictionary, it's um, 
identified as AGEP, age. Um, so the, the text in red are what appears as labels in the CSV or the um, CSV files or the um, spreadsheets as the um, property. Um, total person, total personal income. This is the um, mnemonic in the um, a ABS dictionary. And this is the actual name of the variable. There is also household size, which refers to average persons per household and further um, definition or qualification to it. Number of persons per bedroom. Um, this is sort of a new um, variable for 2016 and it's a derived item. I think it's, um, it's derived by um, dividing the, the number of um, bedrooms or the number of persons living in a household with the number of bedrooms or something like that. So we need to use um, JSON-LD, which is JavaScript um, uh, notation for a link, linked data to provide a context where each attribute will be well described. Um, the definition can be um, provided by the organization, it, its very own context, or use an existing one, which is widely used, which is what is um, advised. For example, schema.org, which is already, which some people sort of refer to as a de facto standard for web, for scaling up on the web. Each attribute is associated with a URI, which um, provides the identifier and as well as the context for the variables. And one context can be used for all JSON-LD collections so that there is an association of all the um, data that are uh, responding or corresponding to the URI or that particular type of property. Just a screenshot of the schema.org um, website. Um, it, it does say that the um, vocabularies within schema.org are um, uh, produced through community consultation and it has been um, very widely used in web pages, making it easy for um, data to be um, published to the web. So this is an example of a tag um, three tags, age, sex, occupation, were provided to one of um, 16 tags um, that were, so I'm talking in, in this, about this in a long about way. So in ABS census, um, the team clustered the, the properties which amounted to over 15,000 properties just for ABS census. And so because of that volume, it was decided to create a, um, a, a group of tags of concepts that would cover most of those properties. So Marco used um, Open Refine to cluster those over 15,000 properties down to 16 concept tags. So the three of those are age, sex, occupation. And then they were, um, they were matched to equivalent or near equivalent properties in schema.org. So that's what we're seeing on the slide. For example, for age, uh, the closest match in schema.org is the property typical age range. For um, sex, it's gender and occupation. There is one that is occupation in schema.org. So this is an example of um, JSON-LD coding using the app context um, 
property which provides the, which is the one that Jason doesn't have. So this one is going to provide the context for the property and sort of apply um, meaning and um, also syntactic um, consistency to the data sets. So at context, for example, the name, the name of the property. Um, on the web, when we look at, when we look for uh, recipes, they usually have a common structure. So there's the name of the recipe, there's an ingredients list. Sometimes there's a yield, like good for four people, etc. cetera. Um, and then a set of instructions. And for every set of instructions, you'd have the steps for the recipe. And then further on, there could be description. And because you use ingredients that are measured, there are, there's the use of integers, for example, um, two cups, let's just say. So the, the integer also is defined like here in the XSD. So it provides the uh, URI for the exact defini definition of XSD as used in this context. So if you were, for example, um, tagging um, a, a recipe for a web page, then you would use um, those um, properties name. I'm sorry about the um, the bullet points. They were not, they weren't meant to be there. I, I was pretty sure I removed it, but they're here again. So name of recipe is mojito. Uh, ingredients. It's already been defined, so it accepts the the uh, proper values that we want to see on the web page. Um, so ingredients list are inside the square brackets and then yield. So there is um, meaning in it. So we know what yield means in this context. We know what instructions mean in this context. And then the step, which would belong to the instructions. So whenever you go look for a mojito cocktail or a mojito recipe, they or any recipe for that matter, um, they would always, not always, they would um, typically have these um, structure, uh, ingredients method, etc. Excuse me, I just have to uh, drink some water. Okay, how to create a context for ABS census data. Um, the ABS census data is in, um, it's available on the web in HTML as well as in, a, it's in a downloadable format document. But there's, we're looking, or the project, the data co-op is looking at converting that uh, into SCOS with the ARDC uh, vocabulary service. So we discuss we'll, there will be um, the URI, so it will be very easy to, it will be easier to um, use it in um, the tagging and the JSON-LD um, syntax. So the, the Data Core project is working with the ARDC vocabulary service um, at the moment for that. There are some demo versions available already. Um, however, it's been, um, mentioned that uh, there could be questions of governance and quality assurance. So that is under discussion. Okay, so that's just ABS census data. And we still have to think of um, harmonizing ABS census data, for example, with other um, data sets from many other providers, possibly different domains as well. So this is, um, a uh, visualization of, um, for example, you begin with um, ABS census data, you've got a uh, controlled vocabulary for that that you could easily, easily, sorry, easily convert to um, link data using the schema.org um, contextual URIs, for example. But then you have to contend with having uh, several or many different um, data sets from different 
sources. So there would be a lot of variations in it. So the harmonization is um, semantic harmonization within the data co-op providers uh, across the providers um, data sets is something we, we the project is still looking at. At the moment, um, the, there are demo versions for these classifications in, in the SCOS version, demonstration version from the ABS um, census vocabulary. So for example, when we look at Australian, New Zealand standard classification of occupations, um, this is how it might look like. And it would have um, these various um, um, inclusions within the hierarchy of that one. And then you've got the IRI, which is going to um, link the definition of the variables when you use um, JSON to other um, properties and also facilitate um, connecting it with um, other, with schema.org or other standard. But at the moment it is um, schema.org that the project is using. So this might look like this. I'm sorry about the, um, the noise. I'll just close the door. It's, um, it's mowing day in my complex. Hang on. So we've got the usual um, context, contextual statements within JSON-LD. Um, at the top is the use of the, um, the vocab for, from schema.org, but um, within ABS census, the URL, um, the SCOS version of the variables from the uh, dictionary will be referred to to the um, to discuss um, URIs using the um, URL um, property. My apologies for interrupting Maria just to let you know that um, we are running a little over time now with your uh, presentation. Okay, this is nearly done, sorry. Oh, that's fine. Um, yeah. Okay, so we've just um, tackled ABS census. However, the uh, problem is, um, as I've mentioned, harmonizing throughout the, the different data sets from different providers for the uh, platform project. Um, this is just a picture of the 16 properties from the um, ABS census and their corresponding um, schema.org URIs. So for example, for age, um, this is the additional property. Um, for that variable, we've got um, a URI pointing to the schema.org, uh, connecting the, the age persons from the um, age persons variable from the SCOS version of the ABS census dictionary into the mschema.org. Uh, we would like to thank the data co-op project partners uh, and um, Australian National University, Griffith University, University of Melbourne and University of Tasmania. And of course, Swinburne University.